So I've brought Brian Wang back on today because I am going to be playing in territory that is above my pay grade. I mean, if you look up above my pay grade in the dictionary, you'll find my picture <laughs> related to the subject matter that we're going to be covering today. But I know that Brian Wang, at least, is uh, somebody who is very uh, clearly educated and uh, has experience in this area. So, Brian, uh, glad to have you on board today. Glad to be here, Randy. All right. So if you like having Brian on, you know what to do. I don't have to tell you anymore. You know, I'm sure you'll see some notifications uh, in terms of, uh, you know, joining Patreon, following Brian over on his Patreon, look for Brian on Twitter, on his on his uh, website in particular. That's really what he's uh, got going right now. This is his big website, huge website. Okay. So let's say for as another direction on this let's say that the room temperature supercomputing thing is 10 years off that it, you know it turns out that it does take a while to ramp this thing up and to really get it to be significant and it's not going to be ready for the two or three years from now when elon is concerned that there just isn't enough power what do you see i know you are a huge solar guy mm -hmm. i know that elon is talking about coming in with hydrogen in certain applications and coming in with uh, nuclear and some applications. I uh, uh, saw a story this morning, which I reported on this morning, where the first nuclear reactor was actually uh, 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 turned on yesterday. Uh, first nuclear reactor in seven years, I think, in the United States. Um, we've got the micro computer, micro nukes and, and the uh, small, you know, smaller nukes that have been talked about. What are you seeing, Mr. Futurist? <laughs> what will happen in addition to this that might help us get to where we need to get in a couple of years? Uh, so, so one, even if the efficiency stuff happens, that just um, increases the eventual overall demand, right? When I, you know, like if I lower the price of um, gasoline and blah, 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 or, or cost of driving by five times, it, instead of keeping the same amount and being five times more efficient, I end up, you know, using 10 times as much, right? And, and you know, or, and be using up twice as much energy, some of that, or using, you know, 50 times as much. So you end up using more, just like, you know, everything's more efficient now, but our economy is 10 times bigger than it was 100 years ago. So um, we're going to need to make more power no matter what, even if the, the efficiency stuff happens. Um, but, it, you know, it just changes how much we can do. Um, so we're going to have to make more power. We have to make a lot more solar, that 20 to 40 percent probably needs to go solar. Um, you know, Tony Siba talked about the the um, superpower stuff where he says that we should, you know, make 200% uh, percent of the power that we need and then, you know, um, store it, save it, and, and, and then, you know, waste power, you know, spend it on compute where I'm not um, time limited, where I can, you know, use it when it's available. Um, so, and that could be the, the most cheapest way to do it by building a lot, a lot of solar. Um, and, and then you also build the, the other uh, nuclear power as well. I think you should have more of the base load nuclear power, where basically it's hundred percent of that uh, available all the time when it is available, and uh, not totally depend upon the solar because you know there could be things like um, <laughs> yeah. no, no, you know things like you know massive um, super cloudy days during the winter and stuff like that, where you could have like very low amounts of solar power for like two weeks over large regions right, right? right. so it, it just um doesn't work as well like you know it only happens rarely but then when it does happen you've disrupted your economy and it costs you 100 billion dollars right so so the you needs to be a rare event needs to be like once in several hundred years once in a thousand years yeah. you know the utility needs to be reliable you know so so our energy needs to be reliable so we need to build a lot of it and we can't we're just scaling up how much you know china's you know got this you know uh majority stake in the market share of how much uh solar power gets made uh the solar panels and that kind of stuff and we just need to you know wrap that up but you know just like um elon make sure that we have um certain battery production in other places outside of china right. you know it'd be foolish to allow china to dominate just because they're willing to eat the losses on it you know just strategically you know you need to make more of it so what about solar i keep seeing uh headlines about uh more double-sided uh, solar more solar that works in the dark 
more solar that's thin uh, thin application more solar that's gets way more energy per square inch or whatever i mean i keep seeing lots and lots of reports but it always seems to me i don't even sometimes look very deep into them because it seems like okay you've done this in the lab uh, is there is there anything like this uh room temperatures um uh, superconductors that is close enough seemingly that might make a breakthrough in in the efficiency of the uh, of solar the new solar material um which is a bros brovskite so it's uh, way less expensive than silicon um it's been worked on for you know a couple of decades and it's getting to to scale so brovskite is something that's you know it just works out hugely economic terms of like the, the, the abundance of it and um they've gotten the efficiency up so it's kind of like the um the equivalent of the uh, uh iron phosphate battery you know you have nickel which would be the, the, the silicon equivalent and then now you got iron phosphate so it's um at scale um and it's got the efficiency so that would be a swap over so, so it's the kind of thing where you know just like there's a hundred different kinds of battery technologies, you know, solid state, you know, always, you know, hoping for solid state, hoping for solid state. Same thing on the solar side. There are these things which are like the equivalent of, of a solid state battery, where it's like, oh yeah, it'd be great. But then things have been moving along and then, you know, they're not, you know, making the terawatt hours of stuff that we need, right? So um, same thing for, for, for solar in that, you know, all the new tech has to be cut with the, the filter of, can I actually make, you know, the whole industry work on this thing? Can I make a large chunk of the industry work on the thing? Otherwise, it's an interesting sideshow or a niche application. You know, even 2%, 5% of the whole industry it could be huge. Well, you know, the industry is, you know, 50%, you know, doubling every three to two to three years, four years, whatever. Um, it could be significant and, and someone can make, tens of billions of dollars off it. But in terms of like our overall planning of like where I'm saying I'm going to add 20% of the world electricity using blah, right? It can't be something that's, um, you know, to have to take. You know, strategically, I could have my portfolio bets saying, okay, I'm going to have 2% of this thing. I'm going to try and support it. Right. And do stuff. Right. I'm going to try and get nuclear fusion going. But until it's ready to shoulder the load, which means it's got to 2%, 5%, you know, with my support, then I can't consider I'm going to get it to 20%, I'm going to get it to 50%, right? Because I'm still growing very fast. So it's just, I've got this moving train and I got to have things that are ready to go and scale stuff up. And, and most of the stuff is not ready to go. Got it. And then we get into the situation like right now where there's more solar production than there are folks that are willing to take it. In other words, CATL is overproducing. They have more capacity than what is being taken off right now. So you get into these swings where then somebody's like, well, I don't want to start my new factory because there's no demand right now. It occurred to me this well, morning. One, let, me, let me speak about that. Right? Is that that's why Tesla's strategy is so good, right? Is because, you know, there's the high demand for the electric cars, but then they're, you know, making the mega packs and they can flex that a bit. Right. So then they can say to CTL, I will take all your batteries, which I said they will. And then, you know, I'll use them for my makeup pack to do some other things. Right. And that, and then CTL can think, ah, oh, I can make this plan and I'll get, you know, Tesla, who's taking almost half of my production. And, you know, same thing for LG and other guys. So all the battery guys, suppliers say, Tesla, you're a wonderful customer. You're always taking my stuff and you always, you know, flexing to, to make, you know, mega packs and stuff like that. And you're, you know, you're 10 times bigger than GM and Ford, you know, so then you're a great customer. And then we build factory just for you, yeah. right? Cause you're just fantastic. So that is, is a long-term play that if I'm thinking, oh, I got a cost cut and maybe, you know, financially the Ford and GMs can't do it, but having the model where they can take all the batteries, cause we're going to go from here to 10 X by 2030. 100x by 2040, then you need to ride through these things where it's like, you know, don't cut back. We're going to eat through. And, and the China thing about solar is the government is supporting them on solar. Right. So when they run through these things, where hey, we're losing money for this year, and next year, and then 
trying to get myself says, yeah, so what? Keep going. Yeah, just go ahead. So, you know, but, but to a certain level, right? You know, yeah, okay, definitely. $100 billion, okay, let's cut back a little. They go totally nuts. But, you know, they're, they're saying we're willing to, to eat these losses and to keep supporting you through this thing because at the end of the day, come out the other side, we're the Saudi Arabia sold. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, just like Saudi Arabia, I, I'll eat through $20 oil when I can still make money on it, you know, $10 oil, because I will have the market in just like Russia, whatever that, and OPEC. So we'll have 40% of the market, 50% of the market, right? So we're going to eat through these losses on, on the down years because strategically, we want to control the world of energy because ultimately you're ultimately going to need it, right? So we're going to look past some of the stuff. So same thing on the solar side, same thing on the, on the battery side. You have to have a plan. Um, as always, amazing to have you on board and mm -hmm. uh, help me with all this stuff that is above my pay grade. And now I feel like I've had a you know a graduate level course. So okay. it's, it's all good. All right. right. So Thank you. Again. Yeah. And then uh, hit like if you liked it. So we get uh, Brian back often and then uh, subscribe, notify all that stuff and uh, follow Brian. Next big future. He's everywhere, yeah, right. especially you want to go to nextbigfuture.com. That's the main place he'd like you to visit and check out what he's doing over there. Thanks again, Brian. Thank you, Randy. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.